Hey there, Nancy Drew Clue Crew! I'm Argelfumpf, and this is the 2020 Nancy Drew Games Mega Marathon! I'm playing all the Nancy Drew games in order. Because of the coronavirus, everybody's quarantined at home. I'm quarantined. All of my viewers are quarantined. So, we might as well play some Hi, Nancy, Drew Nancy Drew games Drew. together. This is my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and pull All righty. So, um, this do is do, game number 19. Nancy it's Drew goes helpful, to Ireland. Especially Woo! if you're new to the mystery solving business. So, Nancy, Nancy Drew is going to Ireland because uh, her friend is getting married. When Kyler Mallory called me from her home in London and asked me to be her maid of honor, I was a little reluctant. After all, I hadn't seen her since she stayed with us as an exchange student a couple of years ago. But when she told me the wedding is going to take place at an old family castle in Ireland, <laughs> awesome. how could I say no? The wedding will be very small, but Kyler still needs help with all the final preparations, which means she'd like me to arrive several days early. So I'm going to fly to Dublin, rent a car, and meet Kyler at Castle Malloy. She warned me that the place is somewhat in need of repairs, whatever that means. And unfortunately, by the time I get there, it'll be night. But I've never been to Ireland before, and I've never even seen a real honest-to-goodness castle, let alone stayed in one. So the fact that it may be dark and run down just makes it more of an adventure. And you know me, whenever the question is, who wants to go on an adventure? My answer is always, I do. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we've got people here in the live stream chat reminding me that this is not a quarantine stream. This is a quarren stream. Ha <laughs> ha. And Nancy's going to a castle. Wow, a family castle. It would be so awesome if, you know, I was in my 20s and Mal my family said, oh, hey, by the way, Michael, you get a free castle. Yeah! Okay, so this is the wedding photo. Maybe not the best wedding invitation ever. I mean, the lighting is totally messed up there, Kyler. But yeah. Castle Loy in Bayland, Ireland. And we have a, a phone card. Oh. I, uh, oh, oh. Okay, well, well I, I, I guess... I guess we... Oh, hold on a second. New game. Hi, I'm Nancy. We have a phone card from the Leprechaun Telephone Service. I love that name. That's a cute little name. Okay. And the wedding invitation. And let's get started. We'll be playing on Senior Detective Mode. Do, 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 do. It's preparation do, 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 for our landing. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Thank you. Yeah, I have to wonder, is Nancy actually uh, paying for her plane ticket to Ireland or not? That's my question. It's probably super expensive. So your plane was on time, your luggage arrived, your rental car was waiting, everything went without a hitch? Yep, and according to Kyler's directions, I'm within two kilometers of Castle Malloy. Now stop worrying about me and get over to the Dunhills. What time is it there? Around two. The party just started. It's gonna go all day, so I've got plenty of time. Are you driving? Yes, Ned, I'm talking on my cell phone while I'm driving, but it's okay. No, it's not okay, Nancy. That's dangerous. You are setting a bad example for everyone here in the Quarren stream. There's absolutely no traffic. And I think I see the gates. I gotta go. Say hi to the Dunhills for me and have fun. Without you? Yeah, right. Take care, Nancy. <gasps> oh, no! Crash. Yep, Nancy crashed your car. <laughs> what was that? So, we're here at Castle Malloy, and basically there's nowhere to go except to the castle. So you just go north, and then you'll reach the castle area. We get to meet our first happy resident in this wonderful country filled with smiling people. Oh! I, um, uh, um, hello, I'm Nancy Drew. I'm here for the wedding. The wedding's been called off. 
So go on back to where you come from. No, wait, please. My car's in the ditch by the gate. I can't go anywhere. Walk down the road to the inn, then. Give me your keys, and I'll see to your car in the morning. I left the keys in the car. Can I at least talk to Kyler? She's sleeping. No, wait. I came all the way from the States. You cannot stay here. Go to the inn, I said. Now off with you. Please, can I come in just for a minute? Hello? Are you there? Hello? Well, that man did not seem as friendly as I thought he would be. Oh, well. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Someone said Nancy has second chances in case she dies, so she doesn't care about using her cell phone while she's driving. Okay, so here you can throw rocks at the window. You can either throw small rocks at the window several times, or you can try throwing a big rock through the window and break the window. Let's see if I can do that. All right, you have to aim it perfectly. Oh, okay. Well, I'll I'll, I'll try again. I'll I'll try again. Yeah, Nancy left her keys in her car. Well, she's in the middle of nowhere. Why not just leave her keys in the car? There we go. Uh -oh. Broke the window. <laughs> Who broke my window? Oh, it's Nancy. Oh, hi. See? That's the door. Go down. I'll greet you there. So, yeah. We broke the window. Kyler doesn't care. Deaf are you now? I told you, you cannot be staying here. You know, what are you doing? That's Nancy Drew, my maid of honor. Let her in. Matt's disappeared? How can somebody you came all the way out here with to marry just disappear? He hasn't disappeared for good. You have to understand, Matt's a bit of a prankster, and the wedding is still days away. Okay, so this is Kyler. Um, sh she thinks her husband disappeared as a prank. He disappeared as a prank? He adores getting people in a tizzy. I do think he's pushing the envelope this time, but... He'll show up. Mind you, it may not be till I've started down the aisle, but he'll show. Saying he just wanted to make this a wedding no one shall ever forget. You know, if I disappeared a week before my wedding, uh... I'm pretty sure uh, my fiancé wouldn't have been so happy and excited about it. So you're here by yourself now? Actually, Matt's best friend Kit Foley is here too. He set up a cot in the Great Hall downstairs. Is he from London too? He lives in London now, yes, but both his parents are Irish. You could practically hear Donal's ears perk up when he heard that. That's the man you met at the door, Donal Delaney, the caretaker. Not Donald, mind you. There's no D at the end, so it's pronounced Donal. That's the way you're supposed to spell it, which is to say that's the way the Irish spell it. Proud of his heritage, huh? Indeed. Which would be tolerable if his love for the Irish wasn't accompanied by an abiding distaste for the British. Now, he rather likes me, but that's only because he considers me to be Irish, since I'm directly related to the man who used to own this place. When it comes to my British fiancé... Donal detests him, which is why he was so quick to tell you the wedding's off. He wants it to be off. He came right out and said, if I am to be married in Castle Malloy, it simply must be to an Irishman. Said my marrying a Brit would upset the fairy people or whatever he calls them. Do you have any idea where Matt disappeared to? No, but I know he didn't go far. The fact is, sometimes I hear him. You know, his voice. It's very faint and muffled. But it sounds like he's calling to me, saying things I can't quite make out. Teasing me, the lout. So I know he's somewhere close by. He'll be here for the wedding. I'd stake my life on it. Of course, I remember well your penchant for solving mysteries. So if you want to give this one a go, by all means do. You could start in the nursery. It's down the hall. That's where Matt had set up his cot and was spending most of his time. Find him, Nancy. Having my maid of honor ruin this silly vanishing trick of his would teach him a lesson he sorely needs. Yes, so Kyler is... I don't know what to say. I, I like Kyler. She's a nice person, but all she does is sit here all day reading a book. What, what are you reading? 
What are you doing in here, if you don't mind my asking? Reading. About myself, in a way. You see, until my grandpapa died and left me this place, not only did I have no idea that this castle existed, but I had no idea my real name was not Mallory, but Malloy. Apparently, Grandpapa changed his name 50 years ago, so no one would find out he was Irish. Interesting. Your parents didn't even know? Unfortunately, they're no longer with us, so I can't ask them. But as far as I know, Grandpapa never told anyone his true ancestry, not even my father. I think it had something to do with his brother, Brendan, the man who owned this place and was living here when it exploded during World War II. He was rumored to have been a double agent, supposedly doing top-secret research for the Allies, but in truth, passing his findings onto the Axis. Not exactly a brother you want people to know about. If the rumors were true. Anyway, ever since I found out I'm a Malloy, I can't stop reading about Ireland. So many different people have populated this country at one time or another. The Celts, the Druids, the Gaels. It's all quite fascinating. It's very interesting she says that, because... My personal family story is sort of the opposite of that. Grandma told us we were all super Irish, like 95, 99% Irish, and uh, recently took uh, one of those DNA testing kits, like 5% Irish, actually. Um, Grandma was exaggerating by a huge amount, just a giant amount. <laughs> oh, well. All these books were Brandon? Yes. Everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's Day. I can't be certain, but I assume so. He was quite the inventor, I do know that. Everything that remains in this place seems as if it's been tinkered with. Even his daughter's dollhouse, of all things. Someone ran out in front of my car on my way here and caused me to drive into a ditch. Are you alright? Me, I'm fine. My car and my cell phone, uh, not so good. Where does Mr. Delaney live? All I know is, he comes at dawn and leaves at sunset. I can't fathom what he does all day, but he always seems to be puttering away at something. When he's not working, he spends most of his time down the road at the Screaming Banshee Inn. How long has he been the caretaker? I don't know that either. A long time, I should imagine, seeing as he more or less came with Grandpapa's estate. I should let him go. All he ever talks about are banshees and fairies and leprechauns. And he can be quite obstinate, as you saw at the door. But if Grandpapa saw fit to put up with him all those years, I suppose I can too. I'll let you get back to your reading. The five months I spent living with you, your dad, and Hannah. And Togo, of course. That was a very happy time for me, Nancy. I can't tell you how thrilled I am you're here. I get to see you again, and I get to see Ireland? <laughs> I'm the one who's thrilled, believe me. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. I'm your maid of honor, remember? I haven't forgotten. Sounds good. Okay, so this is Kyler's room. She's just gonna stay there all day long. And it looks like she's got a bed in this room. Is that is that a bed over there in the corner? We can't really zoom in on it. We've got a nice fire. Uh, we have a puzzle over here. For this puzzle, we need to find two of the weights. And we have a bunch of books, which will be for a puzzle later on. Ah, this puzzle. Okay, everybody, we're going to solve this puzzle. So how many rings do we have on this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rings. Okay, so I'm going to start by building a three tower on the right. That way I can build a four tower in the middle, five tower on the right, six tower in the middle, and seven tower on the right. Odd and even uh, numbers alternate for this puzzle. That's how I like to think of it. Okay, so I start by putting a one where I'm building the three tower, a two where I'm not building the three tower, put one on top of the two, I put the three where I'm building the three tower, I put the one where I'm not building the three tower, I put two on three, and then one on two. So that's how you basically build a three tower. You'll be building three towers over and over and over and over again. Uh, throughout the puzzle. That's the easiest way to think about it. Okay, so put four here, four in the middle. Now I'm going to build the three tower on top of the four so I can move five to the right. So in order to move the three tower to the middle, I put one where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of two. Three where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on three, and one on two. So now I move the four. Now I'm going to build... Now I'm going to build the three tower over here on the left so I can put the four on top of the five. 
One where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of two. Three where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, and then one on top of two. Now I'm putting the four on top of the five, and I'm building a three tower over here on the right. So one where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on two, three where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of the three, and one on top of the two. So that means now I can move the six thingy over here. So now I'm going to build a five tower here in the center. So that starts by me building a, a three tower here. Then I'm going to move the four there and put the three tower on top of that so I can move the five. So one where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not, one on top of two, three where I'm building the three tower, one where I don't build the three tower, two on top of three, one on top of two. D do you want me to keep explaining every single step if that's okay? I, I mean, I could, I could do that, and then I could also, like, not do that. <laughs> okay, so I'm moving four from the right to the left. I'm going to build a three tower over here on the four. So one where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of two. Three where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, one on top of two, five in the middle. So now I'm going to build a three tower over here on the right so I can put the four piece on top of the five. So one where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of the two. Three where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, one on top of two. This allows me to put the four over here in the middle, and I'm going to build a three tower over here in the middle. That way all of the things um, from six to one are here in the middle, so I can move the seven over to the right. So, one where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of two, three on top of the uh, where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, one on top of two. Now I can move the seven piece. Okay, took a breath. <gasps> Okay, uh, so now I've got six over here and then uh, seven there. Okay, so I, in order to move six over to the right, that means I need to build a five tower over here on the left. Building the five tower over on the left, which means I'm building a three tower over here, uh, four over there, three tower on top of the four, moving the five, so that I can move the three tower on top of that. Got it? So one where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of the two, three where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, one on top of the two. So four over here to the right. So now I'm going to build the three tower on top of the four, like I've done before. So one on top of the, uh, one where I'm going to build the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of two, three where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, one on top of the, um, <coughs> one on top of the two. So now I can move the five piece over here on the left. That means the six piece is pretty free. It's pretty even and free. Oh, hey, look, when I move it to the top of the screen, it goes to the, the left corner for some reason, even though my mouse is not in the left corner. That's weird. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, just take this little uh, four tower over here and build it on the left. But of course, in order to do that, I need to build a three tower over here in the middle. So one where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of two. Three where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, one on top of two, then I move the four over there, build the three tower on top of that. One where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of two. Three where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, one on top of two, that way I can move six over here. Now I need to move five over there, so I'm going to build a four tower over here in the center, which means I'm building a three tower over here on the right. So one where I'm building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of two. Three Three where I'm building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, one on top of two, so I can move four over here to the middle, and I'm building the three tower on top of the four, so one on where I'm building the tower, two where I'm not building the tower, one on top of two, three where I'm building the tower, one where I'm not building the tower, two where I am building the tower, one where I am building the tower, that's two on top of three and one on top of two, that way I can move the five over here to the right. So in order to get the, the four piece over here on the right, I need to build a three tower over here on the left, and we're getting close to the end of the puzzle. So one where I'm not building the tower, two where, I, uh, I mean, one where I am building the tower, two where I'm not building the tower, one on top of two, three where I am building the tower, one where I'm not building the tower, two on top of three, one on top of two, four over there to the right. One where, and, and this is just building the three tower over here on the right. So one over on the right where I am building the three tower, two where I'm not building the three tower, one on top of two, three where I am building the three tower, one where I'm not building the three tower, two on top of three, and one on top of two, and I'm done. That is the fastest solution for the puzzle. I did try to rush through it. 
I can do that in real life, as you can see. Um, I've basically got that puzzle pattern memorized. This'll come in handy. I showed it off handy. to my friends and family, and they, I don't know if they were impressed or frightened. I think they were frightened. Whoa, that would have been quite a fall. Yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, so I think what we need to do is leave and then immediately come back. Nancy, splendid timing. Woo! I just thought of something you can do for me. There's an old-fashioned printing press downstairs. Have you seen it? No, I haven't taken a good look around down there yet. Just go down the stairs and look for the monstrosity with the big wheel and the levers. You can't miss it. It came with the castle. My great-uncle Brendan had all sorts of gizmos and gadgets and machinery lying around. Anyway... When I saw the printer, I told Matt why not save some money and print the programs for the wedding right here. Uh, problem is, Matt failed to get them done before he turned into the merry prankster, and since I have the mechanical aptitude of a bacterium... <laughs> would you mind finishing the job for me? You'd only have to print three more sheets, and the plate, the ink, the paper, everything you need is right there. No problem. Thank you, Nancy. You're the best. <laughs> Yeah, Nancy leaves the room, and one second later, Kyler... Oh, great timing! I thought of a chore for you to do. <laughs> Whew. Okay, so what we want to do is grab this thingy here, and we're going to do the printing press. Pretty simple. Can we print I should it? use black ink to print the programs. I was going to print it in blue, but I guess Nancy won't let me. Here's a printing plate we need to find four of them in order to beat the game. And we're going to put one here. Well, I mean, this is an Irish game, so I have to speak very, very quickly. Yes. That's why I'm told. I'm told that, you know, Irish people, they can talk when they're breathing in and when they're breathing out. Oh, check this out. Alan Payne. That's kind of weird. Alan Payne is the best man, not this Kit Foley guy. I should finish what I just printed before I take more paper. This is pretty simple. I mean, yeah, it, it's a simple challenge. You just do three of them. Done. Let's see. I want to check out a couple things. Number one, I want to check out this. Oh, I don't have a coin for it, though. Ah, I need to get a coin for that. So over here is a picture of Kyler in her red turtleneck sweater. She loves her turtleneck sweaters. This is her in Venice with Kit looking very romantic indeed. Why is there a picture of the bride getting romantic with the groom's best friend? That's creepy. Hi, you must be Nancy Drew. I'm Kit Foley. Ignore the eye if you can. Walked into a door the other day. Looks worse than it feels. I'm a bit surprised you're still here, given the circumstances. I'm not sure I fully understand the circumstances yet. That's because you've only heard Kyler's version of what's going on. Or worse, that Daffy Caretaker's version. Either way, it's unlikely you've heard the truth. The truth being... Matt isn't playing a practical joke, and he hasn't been kidnapped by fairies like Denal claims. He got cold feet and left. It's as simple as that. Really? Are you sure? Well, Matt didn't come out and tell me he was leaving. But hey, I am his best friend. I know him better than anybody. Better than his bride-to-be? I mean, he loves Kyler, but she can be a handful. And he's no pushover either. Their relationship is so tempestuous, it scares him. She thinks once he makes a real commitment, everything will be fine. But he's not so sure. So he bailed. Without saying anything to her? I'm sure he'll contact her in another day or two. In the meantime, she's in a raging state of denial, and I, for one, don't see any harm in allowing her to stay that way. I seriously doubt he walked out on her for good. It's just that for Matt, marriage is way too much, way too soon. Yeah, so somebody just pointed out, did Kit actually bring that romantic picture with him to the wedding? Kit... That's, uh, that's not a good sign. That's actually a really, really terrible sign. If you and Matt are best friends, how come he didn't make you his best man? 
Matt felt like it would be a good move for him politically if he asked this guy he knows from work, Alan Payne, to be his best man. And I said, fine, don't worry about it. No big deal. When or how did you realize that Matt had disappeared? Kyler and I went for a walk, came back, and the next thing I knew, Kyler was saying Matt was nowhere to be found. Where did you last see him? In the nursery. He always seemed to be in the nursery fiddling with things. Whenever I'd tease him about it, he'd always give me this impish little grin like he was up to something. When I checked the nursery and saw that Matt's suitcase and backpack were gone, it finally dawned on me that he had left and he wasn't coming back. Of course, by that time, Kyler had convinced herself that he was simply playing one of his practical jokes, and I couldn't bring myself to burst her bubble, so I didn't. It looks like you're drawing something. Are you an artist? Me? Not hardly. I'm with a real estate development company. These are just preliminary sketches for a couple of projects we're working on. In other words, I'm doing homework. Residential real estate or commercial? Mostly residential. And let me tell you, we'd have a field day with attractive land like the one this castle sits on. Ocean view, easy commute to Donegal, bedrock foundation, readily accessible groundwater. That bog's a bit problematic, but a little sand, a little gravel, a little landscaping, voila! A cluster of six, maybe eight luxury homes amid a park-like setting that would sell like lightning. How come you sound so American? Because I am American. My father's VP of International Sales for Krollmeister Incorporated. The company transferred him to London 15 years ago. I've pretty much lived there ever since. I just can't seem to pick up the accent. I'll see you later, okay? Keep it real. Okay, so we are keeping it real, dude. Da, 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 da. Okay, Kyler, we finished your chore. Did you finish the programs? Yep. But I noticed that they say the best man is someone named Alan Payne. If Kit is Matt's best friend, why isn't Kit the best man? Matt said that's the way Kit wanted it. He got here early, too. Like, Nancy, you just talked to Kit about this. Uh, do you think he's lying and that's why you're asking Kyler for confirmation? But when Matt vanished, Alan was certain that Matt was playing a joke and refused to be the butt of it. So he went back to London, saying he'll reappear only when Matt does, and not a moment before. You know, perhaps you should give Alan a call. 0044-020-7946-0481. He may have seen something while he was here that could help you find Matt. Have you a phone? Not one that works. You have to use the phone down the road at the inn. My cell phone gets absolutely no reception here. Did you know when you decided to hold your wedding here that half the place is pretty much rubble? Oh, yes. Mind you, I didn't even know that Castle Malloy existed until Grandpapa died and I was notified that I'd inherited it, at which point the executor of his estate sent me pictures and assured me that despite its appearance, it was in fact habitable. When was the last time someone lived here? From what I was told, no one's lived here since the explosion. What kind of explosion? One summer night in 1944, this- Yes, Kyler memorized that long phone number off the top of her head. She has an amazing memory. ...place, or half of it at least, just suddenly blew up. It was rumored that my great-uncle Brendan was working on something that involved a new kind of rocket fuel. He was killed along with his wife and young daughter. Apparently, they all just vaporized. Which, I guess, is why Dinant claims the nursery, where the little girl spent most of her time, is haunted. I'd better get to work. Good luck. Yeah, okay, so this is the uh, nursery over here to the left. Ah! Crow. Yeah, so a lot of these windows are broken. Like, this window's completely broken. I don't know, how much money would it take to fix this castle? This castle is really in shambles. I think Kit has the right idea. It might be worthwhile to just sell the castle at this point. Or maybe just sell part of it in order to uh, get enough money to fix the rest of it. Yeah, so this is where this is where the little girl Fiona used to live. Aha, and I got some money. Ha 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 ha. Good. I needed that money. 
And this is going to be a, a puzzle here. So we need to put all these uh, creatures into place according to the rules. So pig is exactly right of the rocking horse. And cow is above pig. That's fine. So the cat is above somebody and to the right of a suit of armor. So it must be to the right of that suit of armor. Directly above uh, that person. This girl is here. Got it. Yeah, like just sell the the sheep pasture or the bog, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see a real estate development plan. That's gonna be one of the things we'll see. So that will show uh, what areas you can sell off. I don't think I can jump that far. Yeah, that's the that's the tower. I don't think we can get out of the tower though. It's broken. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on a second. No wait. Downstairs. Sorry, I got confused. My mistake. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, go over here, and I'm going to spend the money. I need three. Okay, I've got three coins now. I would like a fortune. Health is the greatest of human blessings. Isn't that true? Sure hope nobody uh, is sick here. I mean, that's why everybody's quarantined, is because there's a deadly virus on the loose. So hopefully y'all can stay healthy and happy. Where are those lights in the tower coming from? Yeah, it's, it's really sad with all the news about the people dying, because every single day we seem to hit a record for most number of people who have died from the disease so far some places are doing better than others South Korea has been doing extremely well uh, from what I've heard okay so now that Nancy has a lantern she can walk all over the area all over all over so maybe this part of the uh, the castle Malloy can be sold right this part here it's pretty big you could build a house there we've got a river yeah yeah, just build, uh, yeah, I think all the way there, uh, I think that could be a place that you could sell. Okay, so you want to use your uh, card here. And call Alan Payne. Hello? Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Nancy Drew. I'm calling from Castle Malloy. I'm Kyler Mallory's maid of honor. Yes, I remember that name. Has Matthew finally put an end to that ridiculous prank of his? No, I'm afraid he's still at it. But if you have a second, could I ask you some questions? It should be a minute or two before my ride gets here. What's on your mind? Do you have any idea where Matt may be hiding? None. And if what you're really asking is, am I in on his little joke? The answer to that is, absolutely, unequivocally, no. I detest practical jokes. Do you remember Matt saying anything odd? Anything that in hindsight might suggest where he went? Nothing that I recall. Although, he did say a lot of things. Not to me, but to Kyla and that other chap, Kit. And he said them quite loudly, I might add. What do you mean? The evening before Matt disappeared, he and Kit had a terrible row. I couldn't make out exactly what was being said, but they both sounded very angry. Furious, I dare say. In fact, the next time I saw Kit, he was sporting a black eye. And the next morning, Matt and Kyla had a go at each other. Nothing physical, mind you, and once again, I couldn't make out what was said, but I promise you, they were quite put out with each other. I was more than happy to bid the lot of them farewell. Though, I imagine I'll be returning to the castle before too long. Matt is bound to find his prank as tedious as everyone else does eventually. I must be off. Nancy, it was a pleasure venting to you. Hopefully before too long we shall meet in person. Cheers. So, we have to call Alan. He tells us about the fight that they had. And that fight will be... What do you call it? So, uh, uh, that, we're, we're going to confront Kit about that fight. And then he's going to give us a job. Thank you, Kit. 
it is fun doing bartendering in this game. That's nice. I actually like that puzzle. It's pretty cool. It would be extremely awkward if you were stuck with, like, three people you barely know and they were all fighting the entire time. Especially because they were in a love triangle with with the groom's best man desperately in love with the bride who is his ex. Oh. How's it going? Alan Payne told me he overheard you and Matt arguing the day before Matt disappeared. And pretty much right before you <laughs> walked into that door. What were you doing talking to Alan Payne? I thought he might know something that could help us find Matt. I told you, Matt bailed. He doesn't want to be found. Look, like I said, Alan Payne doesn't really know Matt or me that well, okay? The fact is, he misunderstood what he heard. Matt and I have been friends for more than 12 years. We were just fooling around. Fooling around? <laughs> you ended up with a black eye. I told you that was an accident. I'm clumsy. What were you two talking about? I... I forget. That's how inconsequential it was. Hey, I just remembered. Kyla wants me to do the seating chart for the wedding dinner. Like I said, I can't bring myself to tell her there's not going to be a wedding. Anyway, I need to get to work on it, so you're gonna have to excuse me. Course, you could always go- I don't like how he makes that dismissive hand gesture, like, go away, go away, Nancy, you're gonna have to excuse me. Ugh. Give it a shot. You just have to figure out where each guest should sit by taking into account their needs and preferences. What do you say? Okay, so, um, uh, chat, should I, should I try to solve this puzzle legitimately, or should I cheat? Sure, I can do that. Excellent. Just fill it out and bring it back to me when you think you've got everyone sitting in the right place. Because unless and until it gets done, afraid I'm going to be pretty much incommunicado. Because I've got a picture of the solution. The solution is the same every single time, whether you're on junior mode or senior mode. I think it's Nancy and Kyler are in the top, and then Matt, and then Alan. No, 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 it's got to be Kyler and Matt next to each other, and then Alan next to Matt. So these are the, the four people. <laughs> a few people want me to try to do it legitimately, and, and then somebody said, if it's do it legitimately, and if it's too hard, cheat. Okay, so uh, you can't sit to a guest of the same color. All the wedding party sits together. Uh, on the long side of the table, Rose sitting next to Taylor and to the left of Richard. So Rose, uh, let me see. So it'd be, how would that even work? So if Rose is, ah, if Rose is sitting next to Taylor, Rose is sitting next to Taylor. Yeah, like that. And then uh, she's to the left of Richard. Maybe, no, no, no. That's the long side of the table. Not the short side of the table. So next to Taylor, left of Richard. Something like that. Uh, Lori wants to be directly opposite of Kit. Of course. And a, a corner seats are people of the same gender. Okay. Taylor wants an end chair. So if Taylor, Taylor wants an end chair... Taylor goes there, Rose next to Taylor, and Rose is left of Richard. Okay. Jane, Alan, Henry, and Linda are on different sides of the table. Uh, I don't know where I would put Richard. Uh, Matt, two seats to the right of Kit. Okay, so that means Kit's there. Within six seats, Linda's to the right of John and to the left of Heather. So, uh, Linda, right of... Okay, it's got to be something like this. Linda, John, and Heather. Uh, okay. Yeah, I am trying to do this. So these are all characters here. <laughs> characters from previous Nasty Drew games. By the way, I'll, I'll, I'll say who all of them are. Jane Pendlin uh, from Nancy Drew, Curse of Blackmore Manor. Taylor Sinclair from Nancy Drew, Secret of Scarlet Hand. Rose, I'm forgetting her last name, from Message in a Haunted Mansion. Richard Topkin, Topham from Nancy Drew, Secret of the Old Clock. John was the ghost hunter in Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. Linda Pendlin, uh, from Linda Pendlin, also from Curse of Blackmore Manor. Heather McKay from game number 14. Henry Bolay, 
um, Crystal Skull game, and Laurie Gerard from Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. Lots of Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon people here. Anyway, okay, so let's see. I think I've got this right. Adjoining corner seats need to be uh, the same gender, so Jane must be there, right? So that means um, Henry here and then Laurie there. Laurie wants to be directly opposite of Kit, though. So let's just put Laurie next to Nancy. I'm sure Nancy will have no problem with that whatsoever. How's the seating chart coming? Yeah, so how many years has it been since uh, <laughs> that, that game came out, uh, the, the Curse of Blackmore Manor? Jane would no longer be 12 years old. She would be like an angry teenager now, because it's been like three or four years. <laughs> Could you take a look at it? You bet. There's something funky about the left side. Try again. Oh, there's something funky about you. Um... Guess it's alternate. Alternate by gender on the long side. Male, female, male. Ah, there's the funkiness. Okay. So how's that? How's that? Just messing around. Does that make... So Jane, Alan, Henry, and Linda all on opposite sides. You think Jane and Linda, because they're related, would want to sit, sit next to each other? But no. I'm looking for the clue about John, and uh, where was that? So Linda is right... John's right, and left of Heather. It's, uh... But there's Richard in between How's them. the seating chart coming? I think that... I think that fulfills the rule, though, if Richard's in between them, because she's still technically to the right of him, right? Could you take a look at it? You bet. This looks great. Got wow. it. Wow, you did it. Woo! I'm impressed. So now we can talk. Yeah, All now right. we can talk. Oh, hey, actually, you might want to take a look at this first. I found it on the floor in Matt's room when I was looking for him. What is it? Frankly, it didn't make a lot of sense to me, but maybe it will to you. Take it. Cool. If anybody can figure out what Matt was doing with it, you can, I'm sure. Good luck. So this is going to be a difficult puzzle. I guess it could have been Jane from Secret of the Old Clock. That Jane. Wonder what that crow's doing in there. We have this book. So, ow! The crow attacked me, but I didn't see because I was looking at the book. Sorry. So, okay, so the one with up, the one with the up on its belly needs to be facing forward. And then the, the one with the right on its belly needs to be facing right. The one with the down on its belly is facing backwards, B. Uh, left with the one that's left. The one with this design needs to be facing forward. Does that make sense? So we need to move the uh, them around according to the positions in the book. And it's going to look something like this. Done. So uh, you move them according to the book, and that's how you do it. You get more of uh, those tokens, and we get a doll. And also we have Kyler's dramatic, 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 dramatic thing. Okay, so here it is. I, Kyla, choose you, Matt, my best friend, my companion, my love, through life's trials and will travel, tri tribu tribulations, celebrations, the road of life together, through thick, no, not through thick and thin, united in heart and mind, friend, ah, what am I doing? This is wrong, gosh, that's, that's not at all how you write now. So, Kyler has some angry wedding vows. That's not a good sign. And I don't think we can ask her about them either. It's sad. I wish we could gossip about those wedding vows. Kyler? Kyler? You're trying to write your own wedding vows and they looked terrible. Okay, so, um, this room. We're actually gonna solve this puzzle first, if we can. So according to my notes, this piece is number one. So that goes in spot number one. And this piece is spot number six. And this is going to be number two. So this is going to be number seven. And this is going to be number eight. 
And then these are three and four. Those need to be matched. And then nine is already in place. So you right click to spin them around. Let's hope my notes are okay. I hope my notes are okay. Um, these are notes from like 2008 when the game first came out. Uh, <laughs> haven't seen them in a while, but it worked. Yeah, woo. High five Michael from 12 years ago. Yeah. So, um, we, we have these, these, uh, buttons. We're just going to put them into place. And we're going to make a little rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And that opens up a hidden passageway. So here in the hidden passageway, we have a, a plank, and we have directions on how to get through the bog. Woo! So that's what we're going to do. But first, scary stuff. If I can get out of here. How do I get out of here? Here? Okay, scary stuff. It's that crow. Ow! That's my head. It's the Banshee! You're right. There has to be a logical explanation for what we just saw. So I'm going to calm down, relax, and trust that you will discover what that thing was. You are going to figure it out, aren't you, Nancy? I promise. You have a lead? If Matt was staying in the nursery, where's his luggage? Right there by his cot. It's not there now. But it was there, just last night. I remember seeing it when I peeked in to see if he'd finally decided to reappear. At least, I think I saw it last night. If it's not there now, perhaps Donal moved it, took it to storage or something. Because I know I saw it after Matt went missing. So it's around here somewhere, just like he's around here somewhere. I'm sure of it. I'll catch you later. Keep me posted. Yeah, I don't know what she's wearing on her head. Is that a headband? Is that a headband? Is that a strip of lace? Is it a tiara? I don't know. I have no idea. Cool, so let's go through the bog. Nancy's pretty calm about being attacked by a, a, a banshee, I suppose. Kyler is worried. Nancy's really calm about it. So where's the bog? Here we go. Okay, one forward. One right. Two forward. I'm just following the instructions that were here. On trail, so that's forward one, that's right two, that's left three, that's down one. So, uh, looks like this is going to be right two. Uh, forward two. Ooh, left four. One, two, three, four. Back to one, two. Yeah, Nancy only freaked out when the Banshee ran her off the road, but now Nancy and the Banshee are old friends, so uh, the Banshee doesn't scare her anymore. Banshee just wants an update on the love triangle drama. Yeah, that could be it. Okay, back three. One, two, three. Uh, two left. One. Two. One forward. One left. Two forward. One right. Two forward. Two right. 
And two forward again. One right. One forward. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is where the Banshee lives in this little hut in the middle of the woods. And the Banshee also has a jetpack. Don't see one of those every day. Yeah, you don't really see one of those any day, really. I I've never Looks seen like a jetpack. So we need a key here, and we're gonna do that sheep puzzle in a while. Ew! So, ew, ew, bugs, gross. I don't wanna deal with bugs, yucky. So we need to get the uh, bug recipe. The bug recipe. Ooh, there's a recipe for summoning a banshee. Not sure why you'd want to summon one of those. Anyway, bug bane. So tansy, pennyroyal, wormwood, thyme, and catnip. Tansy, pennyroyal, wormwood, thyme, and catnip. It's the same basic puzzle as making tea for Minette in Danger by Design. But oh my gosh, this variation of the puzzle is so much nicer. Go away, bugs. So getting rid of them, we can get that thingy. It's a lens. I don't know where that doll thing came from. The doll legend? No idea. Okay, so I'm going to put the lens here on these three crosses. Those show three symbols, and each cross has a specific date. So we want to press these three symbols in chronological order. Meaning the earliest one first, uh, then, then the next earliest one, and then the last one. We have the lens. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So symbols we want to press are one, two, three. And now we can go through the gate to the sheep area. Sheepy, 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 sheepy ran away. Sheepy, 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 sheepy ran away. Sheepy, 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 sheepy. Sheepy, 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 sheepy! Sheepy, 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 sheepy! So over here on the right-hand side of the bog, there's like a random tree that we can zoom in on. I'll see if I can find it. Where is that tree? Here it is, that tree. And here are the real estate plans uh, for the area. So, uh, Castle Malloy, uh, let's see, so that's where the bog is, and that's where the river is, that's the old bridge. So, golf course in the area where we are now, we're gonna keep the weird stones for some reason. And then a parking lot, which is obviously way bigger than the golf course. I mean, obviously. You keep the castle and the garden, yeah. Ah! So, uh, yeah, so that's Kit's, um, fantastic plan to develop this area. I want to go to the sheep paddock here and close it up. I don't want to close it up. I want to get this gear here. Now we're going to visit... Now we're going to visit Kyler. Yeah. He's gonna pave paradise and put up a parking lot. Sheepy, 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 sheepy. Building a condo on a bog. Terrible idea. Terrible idea, actually. Just not a good idea at all. Okay, well, Kyler. Where is Kyler? Over here. You have a lead? Mostly I have a question. Do you know anything about this sketch? I found it outside. It looks like a drawing for some kind of housing development for the land the castle sits on. Apparently Kit did them. Did you ask him to? 
No, and I seriously doubt Matt did either. Kit must have done those on his own. The question is, why? Anyway, I thought of something else you can do for me. Since there's a possibility, however remote, that there are forces at work around here that none of us completely understands, I think it only prudent to do what I can to counteract them. To that end, I would like to include these herbs and flowers in my wedding bouquets. According to Irish lore, each of them is believed to be associated with things I could use a little more of right now. If you could pick them for me and put them in that vase over there, that would be wonderful. Here's a basket. Yep, 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 yep. So when we find all of these things, that will create an argument between Kyler and Kit. Oh, she's got a little wedding ring. That's cool. This, of course, means that in spite of whatever it was I saw in the nursery, I still believe there will indeed be a wedding. Because no matter who or what took Matt, you're going to find him, Nancy. I have to believe that. Please don't let me down. I'd better get to work. As soon as you find out anything, let me know. So, embarrassing story time, everyone. So, at, at my wedding, uh, w with the wedding ring, I'm actually supposed to say, what is the line? With this wing, I, with this ring, I, the wed, and put the wing on the, uh, the person's finger. So, we didn't practice that ahead of time when we did, like, the wedding rehearsal. So, um... <laughs> I couldn't get the ring to fit on my wife's finger. So I, I put, <laughs> I tried putting the ring on and it didn't go in her finger. And so I tried to, I had to do it like three times before <laughs> I actually got the, the ring on her finger. Um, everybody laughed. I wasn't trying to be funny. <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing. Okay, so this puzzle, this puzzle, a little harder on uh, senior mode. Because on senior mode, you don't have numbers. On junior mode, there's like a number one here or something, and like a number six there. Something like that. I don't remember where the numbers are. But that's the difference between senior mode and junior mode for this puzzle. Okay, you want to get all these gears so they are touching each other. This is the solution. I think I've got it. Oh no, that one, that one's wrong. Okay. Here, maybe? No. Why would it be there? Maybe if I put this one here. There we go. Yeah. Put on the melage wing for her. Yep. That's, that's what I did. Okay, and this gives us one of those uh, complicated things. So, I don't know why that's trapped inside a helmet or why putting all those pieces together to fix the helmet makes it work, but it does. So, uh, this is a B. Or, uh, 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 sorry. Checking my notes again. I have my notes. My notes have these things listed A, B, C. So you want to get these weights to be uh, the exact same uh, weight every time <laughs> Woo! and that gives me part of a thing of a bobber <laughs> yes yes okay so uh, I think I actually have to look at this so I'll be careful and see if I do have to look at it so I need a sheep doll now Nancy officially knows she needs a sheep doll, and she can go to the bog to see that there is a sheep doll in progress, because she can't remember it. She can't remember it, I suppose. I, I'm guessing. I don't know. Whatever. So, um, so what's the difference between a bog and a swamp? I don't really know the difference that somebody shouted about swamps earlier, and I just want to go, WHAT ARE YOU DOING IN MY SWAMP?! Oh, oh wait, oh no, I missed two things for a puzzle. Okay, so with the sheep dolly... That sheep doll needs stuffing. 
To stuff that sheep doll, I'm going to need more wool. Nancy sees she needs more wool. And uh, Kyler wanted us to get a bunch of things for her, right? That's one of the ones she wants. A bog has a bit more dirt than a swamp. And is that really a difference? Cool. What about a marsh? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, no. No, no. Bogs, bogs are more Irish. Okay, cool. We've got to have Irish stuff in the Irish game, yeah. Want to grab that thingy here? Yeah, so we're just going to grab a bunch of uh, flowers from all over the place. I don't really know what a more is. Oh, I know what a more is. That's the opposite of a less. <laughs> Just kidding. So let's see. I need to get one which is to the left of the car. It's to the left of the car. That's where we get some flowers. Marshes tend to be flooded with water. Well, I mean, that's that's what that bog looked like. Okay, here's another thing. I always thought this was random. We just just this random thing right here. It's like, hey, that's a patch you can visit. No way to figure that out until you just walk over it randomly, right? Okay, okay, people are saying what the difference is between a mog and a, uh, I mean, a marsh and a bog. Come on, let's not get bogged down with the details, people. Uh, okay, so here's the slider puzzle. We want to make a slider puzzle that looks like that. Oh, and here's Matt. That actually had, like, Matt's uh, wedding ring there. Oh, it's a sheepy! <gasps> sheepy, 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 sheepy! <laughs> I think I scared it. Okay, so that one tile we got from uh, the weights puzzle goes here. Oh, we don't use it here yet. This is a slider puzzle to start with. Let's do the slider puzzle, everyone. So with this slider puzzle, what we need to do is uh, get all the pieces where they're supposed to go. I'm going to put the upper left-hand piece in the upper left-hand corner. I believe the upper left-hand piece is the one that is right here. Next... I'm going to try to get the piece which is directly uh, below it. Looks like I got the piece that's directly below it without trying that hard. Great. So next I want to put the piece which is directly to the right of the upper left-hand corner. So I think that would be this piece right over there. I find this easiest uh, just to start with the corner piece. It's easiest to start with the corner piece because there's nothing that's blocking the way because you're starting off with that. So now I'm going to find the piece which goes uh, here in the bottom right of this 4x4 area. It's uh, right here. So now I've got this 2x2 area, which is perfectly fine and fantastic. I don't need to touch it ever again. So I'll never move any one of those pieces ever again. That's why I think it's the easiest way to start solving the slider puzzle. So next, what we need to do is try to get these two pieces. These two pieces go in the uh, bottom left-hand corner. So let's see if they. Uh, let's see if we can make that happen. So what we'll do is uh, we'll get all these pieces to move over. Fantastic. We'll move this down and this left, and now I've got that left-hand side pretty much done. Now I need to figure out which are the two pieces that go there. Well, that looks like that's the piece that goes there. Great. What's the piece which goes down here in the bottom? It's either got to be this one or that one. I don't know which one that is. So let's see. Does it look like that? Do those two look like they go together? I think those two look like they go together. I think, I think, that's, I think that's the correct solution, so we're going to go like that. Yep, that looks like a pretty good left-hand side to me. So now we're going to try to get, uh, I suppose, these two bottom pieces into place. So that would be uh, this piece and the piece that's directly above it. So it's going to look like this. No, 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 that's not going to look like it at all. Oh, no, I made a mistake. Okay, so it's going to look more like this. Move this around, move this down, this down and around... 
down like that. So now I've got that bottom corner. Uh, fantastic. I'm gonna move this here uh, again, down and around, and um. Oh no, I made a mistake somewhere. Okay. Darn it. <laughs> Okay, so um, now I'm just gonna have. So are these two middle pieces correct? Is that is that what it is, or did I get these two pieces? At, I think I got these two bottom pieces uh, mixed up. I think that was my mistake. Yeah, I think I got those two mixed up. So now I'm just gonna have to mess everything up in order to get those two bottom pieces uh, correct. Sort of like that, if that makes sense. So that's the upper right corner, but you'll notice I can't get the pieces there in place. So let me try to get the two top pieces uh, in, 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 into place. This is going to look something like this, perhaps? Yeah, I'm totally messing up this slider puzzle. Okay, I'm just going to restart. Restart did that one wrong. My mistake, everybody. Okay, so I'll try it again. I thought I could be cool and show off how good I am at slider puzzles, and then I failed. Oh, well. Okay, so let's get this here, this piece here. See, that piece goes there. Where's the piece that goes on the left? It's directly above it. Of course. Why wouldn't it be? There we go. So I, I'm still going to try to get those two left-hand pieces uh, correct. Yes. Now I need to get this big piece down. that it? I think that is. Now I need to get uh, this piece there. Whew. Okay, let's hope I don't get stuck uh, uh, with the, the same problem I had last time. So what was it? This? It looks like Got a it. piece is missing done. Okay. Sorry I messed up that one time. I tried doing my speed talking and then it threw me off. Okay, so that gives me a plate, and that is the plate which I needed to do. That's definitely a plate which I needed in order to solve the puzzle. So now that I've got two things I can talk to Denal about, I believe. No, wait, I've only got... Mm, let me see. I think I need to finish getting all of the flowers, and then I go... Yeah, I need to finish getting all the flowers first. And then I'll be going um, back to Kit and Kyler. They're going to be having an argument, which will allow me to explore Kit's area. In Kit's area, in Kit's area I'm going to find... Sheepy, 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 sheepy! Uh, I'm going to find something, um, which uh, is important for talking to Denal. And let's see. Where is the flower? Is it down here? That's not it. Down here? That's not it. That's not even kind of a flower. Where's a flower? I want to see a flower. There. So I'll take a look at the uh, list of flowers. That's not the list of flowers. The list of flowers is over here. No, that's not the list of flowers. It's a basket. Okay, I've gotten all the flowers now. Now I've achieved all the flowers, I can go back to Kit and Kyler. Uh, they will be in Kyler's room having an argument, as I stated earlier. And because they're having an argument, I will be able to take this information. I will be able to search Kit's area and that will allow me to proceed with the game. Now, I'm trying to find the area to the left. It's kind of hard to find the hole in the fence because the hole in the fence looks exactly like the normal part of the fence, but it's blue. <laughs> so that's the main difference, and that's how it's easiest to find it. All right, so he's not here. Matt's luggage is right here where Kit was hiding. Dun, 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 dun. So let's have some drama. 
They're gonna fight. Those were just some sketches I made because I was bored. I do that all the time. I'm not after your property. Then what are you after? Nothing! Then why are you trying to tell me there's not going to be a wedding? Because Matt is gone. Matt would never walk out on me. Never. He still loves you, Kyler, but he's not ready to get married, and he just didn't know how to tell you. Oh, so he told you to tell me. Or was his leaving your idea? What'd you tell him, Kit? That I still have feelings for you? That it isn't over between us? Because it is. You know that, don't you? It is most definitely over. And that's it for the fight. I better not go in there. I can't disturb them, though. It's very sad. I, I, I cannot disturb them. I'll just leave them alone. I better not go in there. Are they still fighting? Yeah, they're fighting. Okay. Okay, so now that we've heard them fighting, we can go to Denal. That should trigger a conversation with Denal. Yes, yes, yes. He's going to give us a sheep challenge. Haha. -ha. And I believe he's going to give it to us boldly, not sheepishly. So, you're not so keen on staying at the castle after all, then? Oh, I'm keen on staying at the castle. I'm just keen on talking to ye. Kyler wants me to find Matt for her. Come to me for a bit of aid and advice, did ya? Well, I've got none to give. Not till I got the day's troubles behind me and a crow's nest in front of me. I had a long day of yelling at people, and I really need to relax. I don't blame you a bit. I also have no idea what you're talking about. The mix maid suddenly took ill, leaving poor Seamus on his own, running back and forth trying to mix and serve at the same time. I ordered soon as I walked in, yet here I sit, dying of thirst. I'll do no talking till I get me crow's nest, and there's the sorry truth of the matter. But now, were some spry and spunky lass to lend poor Seamus a hand by taking over the mixin' for a while, that would surely speed the plow. Sounds good to me. I'll see to it you get your crow's whatever, ASAP. So now I get to make drinks. Play mix I'm a mix, mix a while, maid. Well, here's what you're to do. I'll take the orders and put the tickets up here. Each ticket will have no more than two drinks on it. And to save time, I draw little pictures instead of writing out their names. The mixin' book will tell you which little picture stands for what drink. It'll also tell you what's in each drink and how to make each drink. Now, to pour something, put the silver mixin' glass under either the juice tap or the beer tap. Then, press whatever button the mixin' book tells you to press. The book will also tell you how many times to press it. If the drink needs blending, you'll see a picture of a blender at the top of the column in the book. You're to put the solid ingredients into the blender first, then pour whatever's in the mixin' glass into the blender. Then, press the red button. And when the blending's done, just reach under the counter and find the serving glass that's pictured in the book. Put the serving glass on the grey mat and pour everything from the blender into the serving glass. He will not stop talking. Oh my gosh, this character talks for a long time. Seamus, 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 buddy. Take a breath. If the drink doesn't need blending, just find the right serving glass, put it on the grey mat, and pour everything you've poured into the mixing glass into the serving glass. Then, add anything else the book tells you to add, put the serving glass on the tray to the right of the ticket it goes to, and start fixing the next drink. Soon as you've made all the drinks on a ticket, ring the bell, and I'll serve them up. Just remember, if the orders start coming thick and fast, and the tickets start piling up, you're to make the drinks on the ticket closest to the bell first. Now, you'll be making no mistakes, I'm sure. But if you do, just toss the glass into the rubbish bin down there to the right and start over. Mind you, lass, you must do the mixin' fast and proper. The quicker you mix, the more tips you'll be keeping. To work with, you know. Okay, so I do, do have a couple of things. <laughs> Someone said, wait, so when I ring the bell, is Denal going to talk about his great-grandfather, who was a train engineer? No, no, you're thinking of a different game. That's Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. Uh, and I do want to point out that these are not alcoholic drinks. Nancy is not making beer for people. Nancy's making 
Yummy fruit drinks. Like this one's a, a tomato, and then it looks like orange. One, two, three, four orange and raspberries. Mmm. Yummy. So we put that together. We're going to put in two ice cubes and a little bit of lemon. And there you go. That's how you make it. So one, one, two, three, four, one. Another round completed. Next, we want to make the, uh, uh, oh, oh, this is going to be just a mug of root beer, I think. Mmm, 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 yum, yum, yum. Oh, and I need to pour it into the glass. I don't know what kind of, what was that? So, big bear, beer, outlaw beer, ginger beer, old prospector style. Okay, so this is two pineapple, one lemon, two orange. It goes in a small cup. Looks like we've got uh, lemon and ice on it. Is that cranberry or raspberry? Another round completed. I like raspberry drinks myself. One, two, three, four. Lemon, and then one, two, three, four of that. A tall glass, ice, and some cherries. Next I want peat bog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like that's mostly cow. So Another I, round I completed. All done and dusted, are ya? Thank you, miss. Take what's in the tip jar. And the next time you help out, you can keep the tips then as well. Woohoo! Yay! You may come in, crow's nest, girl. Well done. Now, I'm to tell you what happened to the Sassenach, am I? T I'm sorry, happened to the what? The Sassenach. The Englishman. The one Kyler was supposed to be marrying. Well, what happened to him is this. The she took him. The good people whisked him straight off to their world, they did. By the good people, you mean fairies? You'll not be hearing me call him that. All of us have a name we prefer, and with them, the good people it is. So that's what I call him, and you'd be wise to do the same. Just what are these good people going to do with him? Whatever they please. He's in their world now, and he'll not be coming back. That's as much of the truth as we'll ever know. Tis not the first time the good people have seen fit to meddle in the affairs of Castle Malloy. Cause the explosion they did. The one that destroyed half the castle? Brendan, his wife, Caitlin, used to own this place, she did. Aye, and their little girl, Fiona. All three were lost to the world forever when the place blew. But the blame lay not with Malloy. It was the good people. They'd taken a shine to Fiona, his why, and they knew that little girls, no matter how much they're adored by wee folk or mortals, sooner or later, all little girls grow up and grow old. The good people couldn't bear to see this happen to their beloved Fiona, so they made full sure it never did. Sounds to me like the good people are actually just the opposite. They have their ways, and we have ours, is all. That's just the way of things. Got plans for you, they do. The fairies? Uh, the good people? What makes you say that? I meant to pocket your car keys for safe keeping on my way over here. But I couldn't find them. You mean my keys weren't in the car? Aye, that's exactly my meaning. Taken they were. The good people want you to be staying. What do you know about the stone pillars with all the weird writing on them? I've never been able to make heads or tails of them. Even bought me a book on Oam runes. Waste of good money, that was. Oam runes? All those lines. Ancient Celtic symbols they are. Runes. Spell out something. I lack the time and patience to work out just what. I wouldn't mind having a go at it. Do you think I could borrow your book? Sorry to say, I'm not in a lending mood at the moment, lass. A wee bit of me favorite drum music would put me right. But the band can't be playing it because their drummer took sick. Looking for someone to take his place, they are. I could probably fill in. I mean, not permanently, but... 
Go to it, then. One ditty is all. Play it well enough, and the book will be yours. Seamus will help you get started. Yeah, so he just stole Nancy's car keys, or wanted to, but they weren't there. I think someone in the chat had it right. Denal was just taking them somewhere, and he lost the car keys. So he's going to blame the fairies. I didn't lose your car keys, Nancy. It was the fairies who stole your car keys. What a fine lass you are for helping out the band. Now here's what you do. Watch the cue. When it reaches the drum, just hit the corresponding section of the bowrin with the beater. Keep doing that till the song's over. And if you've kept the beat well enough, oh, yeah. the band will split the, their tips The drummer is sick. About That's to start. not good. Just watch the bar, keep your wits about you, and you'll do fine. I, I hope the drummer's not seriously sick with, with coronavirus. That would be terrible. It's okay, Nancy it, Nancy can drop a sick beat. Yeah. This is a pretty easy puzzle. I think I've got it right. Yeah, the tough one is when it's like that. When it's got two right next to each other. Oh my gosh. Oh, is that why the barmaid's not here? The barmaid is sick too? I don't know. The, the drummer's gone. The barmaid's gone. It sounds like everybody here is sick. Ah, uh, that's that's not good. That's not good. Brilliant! Here's your share of the tips. Nancy's pretty awesome. She can basically Sweet do as any Clover job ever. to the honeybee ever. that was. Here's the book. Keep it as long as you like. Now you'll not soon have need of it. Will you be wanting something else from me then? Have you ever been to the other side of the bog? Do I look daft to you now? There's no walking across the bog. Once you fall in, there's no getting out. Oi, when I was your age, younger even, there was talk of an old gypsy woman who kept house in the bog, living all by herself, crazy as could be. But a tall tale is all it was. You stay clear of that bog, girl. There be no crossing it. Not if you're fond of living. I'd better get going. Be careful out there, lass. Hmm, I, 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 I thought I, I thought we could have that fancy conversation about the luggage, but I guess I was wrong. I guess I was wrong. So let's go back here. Perhaps we have to talk to Kit about the hidden luggage before we can talk to Denal about the luggage and the sheepy sheep. What's going on? I found Matt's luggage in here, right over there. What? Over where? It was behind the cots. How'd it get there? Looks to me like someone was trying to hide it. Well, it wasn't me. Matt hid it. Oh my gosh. He didn't go back to London. He's been here the whole time. Kyler was right. Oh my gosh. It is funny how he warns uh, Nancy, stay away from the bog. Nancy's crossed the bog multiple times. Now it's totally safe. You sound kind of disappointed. Marrying Kyler is the biggest mistake he could possibly make. If this means that's what he intends to do, you bet I'm disappointed. I couldn't help but overhear the discussion you and Kyler had in the library. <sighs> that sure didn't go like I planned. All this talk of fairy kidnappings and practical jokes... I just thought it was time to clear the air, but what happens? Not only did she accuse me of being the bad guy in all this, but as it turns out, she had it right, and I had it wrong. Matt didn't walk out on her. His luggage proves it. The part about your still having feelings for her, was she right about that too? Yeah. As for what, if anything, I'm going to do about it, I haven't quite figured that out. Oh man, he still loves Kyler. Have you ever been to the little hut that's in the middle of the bog? No. 
Don't tell me you've been traipsing through the bog. Are you nuts? That stuff's like quicksand. You just gotta watch your step. Well, if you go missing, at least we'll know where to look. I found this sketch you did on the ground outside. What's it for? What, that? I was just messing around. See, I'm into real estate, and whenever I see an interesting tract of land, I like to sketch out how I'd develop it. Just to, you know, keep the juices flowing. It doesn't mean anything. I was just doodling. Great, so it's okay if I keep this. Uh, sure. Go right ahead. Have you ever been up in the tower? Uh-uh. You saw the stairs, or what's left of them. There's no way to get up there. I could have sworn I saw lights coming from it. Perhaps it was the good people come a-calling on their good friend Anal. Or maybe it was just reflected moonlight or something. So if you're thinking Matt's up there, forget it. Ain't no way. Time for me to scoot. See ya. <laughs> That's a pretty good impersonation of Anal. Yep. Perhaps it was the good people come a-calling on their friend and all. Shoo ba doo wop, shoo ba doo wop, ba da ba da ba ba da ba. Okay, Denal, now can I get the sheepy sheep job? What's on your mind then? Aha, yes, I can. Would you by any chance know how Matt's luggage wound up hidden behind the cots in the Great Hall? That I would. I put it there. I told the Sasnach he was not to stay in Fiona's room, yet he did nonetheless. So, while he was out with the others, I took his bags and hid him, thinking to farce him to leave her room. Wasted time, that was. Turns out the good people had something else in mind. Good at finding things, are ya? As a matter of fact, I am very good at finding things. Got something for you then. A key? Aye, to the sheep pen. The sheep I'm keeping on the castle grounds need bringing in so I can shear them first thing tomorrow. You want me to bring them in? There's ten of them is all. With that lantern of yours, you'll be done before you know. Go on now, take it. Just walk the grounds, and whenever you come upon a sheep, blow a whistle, and back they'll go to the barn. When you think all ten are in, go to the barn and make sure, then lock the place up, and that'll be that. Don't be looking at me like I've got three heads, lass. You can do it. Out with you now. There's work to be done. But no, I... No, but I don't I... have a whistle. Were you not bragging less than one minute ago about how good you were at finding things? Well, yeah, but... Then find a whistle. Jeez, Denal. Jeez. Okay, so we find a whistle by playing these games. Actually... So, Dart, we need to get to exactly 201. Okay. Yes? Hey, hey, that was good. Oh, that was a bullseye! Wh what do you mean that wasn't a bullseye? Twas a bullseye, it was. There we go. Yeah, that was a bullseye. Okay, so now I have 12. Uh, let me just get a 12 here. Oh, and I didn't get a point because you need to finish with exactly zero. Really? Really? Ah, uh, okay. I had one extra dart left. So the game did not accept that as a good solution. Okay, 26. So let's see, 12. 12. Throw that one all the way to the side, and now I'll just get a two. Ooh. Come on, two. Come on, two. Dang! Nancy's not very good at aiming. We'll try again. Oh, what? I'm terrible at this, apparently. Well, at least I got a lot of money from making everybody drinks. Okay, okay, I just need to get one. That shouldn't be too tough. Got it. Woo! 
That's not a whistle, that's a dog thing. Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's see. Uh, what are the differences in this... That man's mustache. And then that thing there. And then... I don't know what any of the others are. Help me out here, people in the chat. Let's see. Uh, there's an extra coin flying in the air. And then there's a thing on his, uh, his uh, hood. Yes, that's, that's definitely a thing. Okay, so there's got to be something different about the cat, right? Uh, the cat has an extra stripe here. Yes, yes, that's definitely, that's definitely it. The police, the police on the wagon? The hydrant. What's different about the hydrant? This part of the hydrant? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, now there's still three differences to find. If you just click outside the game window, that, that helps a lot. Circle on the road? No, not the circle on the road. Not the circle on the road. There's text on the wagon, the word police. Okay. The red cart words versus not. Okay. Wagon, wagon, trunk of the car. Ah, uh, yeah. Trunk of the car is slightly different. And one more. One more. Uh... The bolt on the fire hydrant, I guess. Oh, and when you make a bad choice, uh, you, you lose time. So that's good, that's good. Okay, we've got the letters on the wagon already. We've got the, the police boy. We've got... One of the doors. I got the tiny thing on the back of the car already. Uh, I, I mean, the hood. Um, people still saying the wagon. No, that looks the same. Um, the wiggle near the headlights. There's a wiggle near headlights. Really? That one? Wow. Good. Good. Wow. That is such a minor thing. Good job. Good job. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you so much. The sheep are tucked away in the barn, then? Not quite yet. Will you be wanting something else from me, then? No. I should get back to the castle. Fine with me. Whew, that was a tough challenge, wasn't it? Okay, so now we get to go uh, get rid of the sheepy. Just play anything on your... There we go, I got two sheep. anymore let's go here at this puzzle okay. uh oh I'm a, I'm a banshee wow This is the solution to the puzzle. Basically, what you're supposed to do is take that book that Denal gave us. And here we go, there's another one. Here's a snake thingy. And then the tree line. I think that's. No, that's the tree. It's a dead tree. Because that's the time of year it is. Definitely that banshee sounds like a velociraptor, 100%. Got it. <coughs> Definitely, it's like a, a dinosaur, really. Three sheep. I heard one. Generally, when you hear a sheep, that means there's a sheep nearby. A band sheep? Oh my. The sheep is a banshee. Sheep. 
sheepy sheepy. Got you. I don't know what the banshee's mad about. Just, just very angry, I guess. And then two more, huh? One more now, only one more sheep. See this last sheep anywhere. Where are you? Just walking around randomly. Yeah, that one sheep is very lost. I'm gonna stop trying to blow my whistle and just see if I can find this sheep. I can kind of hear some sheep near the barn. Oh, I heard it. Got it. There, the paddock's all locked up. Woohoo! So now that we've finished with the sheep puzzle, we can get another sheep puzzle. Go back to Denal. That puzzle can be really difficult, as you, as you saw there. Sometimes the sheep just does not want to cooperate, mean old sheep. The sheep are tucked away in the barn, then? They sure are. I knew you could do it, lass. Will you be wanting something else from me, then? Since you're going to shear the sheep that are in the barn tomorrow anyway, would it be okay if I sheared one of them tonight? You know how to shear a sheep, do you? Well, no, but... I need some raw wool, and I figure it can't be that hard. I'm willing to let you give it a try, but you'll not be finished till you've filled three bags. Do I have your word on it? Three bags of wool. You got it. All right, then. The book there in the barn will tell you how to operate all the equipment. Oh, and to get a sheep into the shearing station, just blow this tune on your whistle. <laughs> Read the instructions, blow the whistle, and you'll be adding sheep shearing to your list of talents in no time at all. Yeah, so he's just sitting here drinking while Nancy does his job. Ah, oh, Denal. Oh, and there's Nancy's crashed car. She can't check it out. It's just crashed. It's just all the way crashed forever. Baba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame. One for the little boy who lives down the lane. Baba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. So this puzzle, you need to do math based on the sheep's attitude. So this sheep is, that looks like an angry sheep, right? It's angry. So angry is a value of 13. It's also a keen sheep, which is a value of 21. So 13 plus 21. And it's also a green sheep. So that's a value of two, meaning altogether this sheep is 36. 
Beautiful. So that sheep has a mohawk. Wonderful. That sheep is bleeding, which is 15. 15 plus keen, which is 21. Plus brown, which is 6, is 42. This is extreme high tech technology. <laughs> I think that sheep has more wool now than it did earlier. <laughs> One bag down, two bags to go. What did that machine say? Wooly No More version 6. Wow. So there were five other versions of this machine. Wow. Just all of a sudden we have this high, high science fiction machine. Uh, let's see, this one looks panicked, right? I'd say that's panicked, so 16. Plus, uh, burn, 23. Plus brown, which is 6. And that gives you a total of 45. 4, 5. Whatever it is, it looks amazing, that sheep. Those sheep have better hair than I do. Yeah, this is just a calm sheep. <laughs> it's, uh, let's see, so it's 11 plus um, 9 for blue plus 19 for daily. So 39. That's two bags. I promised Mr. Delaney I'd fill three. Two more. Yeah, eat, eat sheep. Uh, you need two sheep to do uh, uh, to fill a bag. This one looks panicked, which is 16, plus Quinn, which is 22, plus yellow, which is seven. That's 45. Four, five. But where do the bows come from, I wonder? Whoa. Now that's an interesting look. That's another mohawk sheep. Wow. Intense. Meh. Okay, this one looks panicked again. 16. Plus... 21. It's a beautiful shape. I love it. And I think that's it. Yeah, where does the purple and pink dye come from? That's another good question. There, all done. The sheep are just dancing. I think the sheep are dancing. Definitely a salon for sheep. Is your sheep not stylish enough? Nancy Drew will help you. So what we're gonna do now is, uh, now that we have the wool, we're gonna put the wool inside the sheep doll and we're gonna use that in order to solve that puzzle inside the room where Matt was staying. Uh, that will give us uh, another plate, I believe, giving us our fourth plate. We'll print out all four of those plates together. That will give us the instructions on, auto on how to use the jetpack. So let's do it. Hey, 
Alrighty. I don't think we need to talk to any of the characters about anything anymore. Like, I don't think we can talk to Kyler about anything. Let's see if we can. You've picked all the flowers? Yep. Go ahead and put them in that vase. There you go. Splendid. Anything else to report? I'm pretty sure whoever caused me to swerve off the road dropped this. Looks like some kind of homemade doll. The clothes. It looks like Matt. And that's his ring. What did the person who dropped this look like? I didn't really get a good look. It was dark and I was distracted and it moved so fast. Frankly, I'm not even sure if what I saw was a person. Do you think it was that creature we saw in the nursery? It could have been, I guess, but even if it was... <sighs> There's a logical explanation for it. Don't just keep saying that, Nancy. Please, make me believe it. I'll let you get back to your reading. Good luck. Those are some good flowers, yes. Okay, so, um, now that we have the sheep, we can solve this puzzle. Let me just get the solution up here. It's going to be a dog in the upper left. And it's going to be the girl over here. It's going to be the other girl over here. It's going to be a cat over here. And a cow over here. I believe the pig over here. The sheep. And the man over here. That gives us the final uh, plate for the pressing, uh, for the printing, pressing, printing plate, whatever you call it. And is there an Easter egg for getting like a doll in every single room? I'll just try. Nope. Okay. Could have sworn there was an Easter egg with that puzzle, but I could be wrong. I'm totally forgetting how to get the Easter egg in this game. Hmm. Oh well. Now that I have the printing plate, I can do the printing plate puzzle. Let's do that right now. Okay, so this is why. This is C. Oh, oh. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay. Put it down, then see. See? That's what you have to do. Yeah, the doll egg might include the other doll. Yeah, there's another doll in this game, which we'll get later. M. And then finally, it's going to be K. This one. The last one we got. complicated one indeed so all those things are gonna be Woo! the jetpack instructions let's open that jetpack we've got these instructions so we want to spin yellow to red then number slot must read seven two nine Then press black and flip red down. Black, red down. Then we're gonna blue to, uh, uh, this one's gonna be to black triangle. Slide lever to halfway point. Press yellow. Red and then turn color dial to red. Well, that was easy enough. Four, blue, and yellow. Um, where's four? Here's four. Blue, yellow. Then go button. Oh my gosh! I'm flying! Woohoo! I'm flying! Woohoo! Matt, are you in here? Ah, okay, well, I'll take another look inside the room. I'll show this off here. It's 
So here we're uh, flying all around. I like these back rooms. I don't know where they connect to. I'm gonna assume this is the bathroom where they keep all the toilet paper. I'm assuming that's where it is. And then somewhere over here is a little mountain area. Yes, a little mountain area. So N5. N is number five. I wish we could just go go into here and say, hi Kyler, hi Kyler, hi it's me. But we cannot, we cannot. That's unfortunate. So upstairs, here we go. So is it Lapin? Yeah, Le Lapin Blue. So I think if we do set it to Lapin, we should get an Easter egg. That's my guess. That's my guess. We'll see if I'm correct. And then we needed to read a bunch of books here. So actually that was a book on Zodiac Constellations, which would have been useful that, for that puzzle earlier. The Runes puzzle. So that's a puzzle. Each one of these books has a puzzle, basically. That's that's how this works. Puzzle on the desk here. Let's take a look here. Each puzzle gives you a, a specific letter, which you'll use to open up the 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 dresser. So one, you'll finally see one C. That's the easy one to figure out. One is C. So C is the first letter. I, I wish I could jetpack here, right? Instead of falling. It would be cool if Kyler said, Hey, Nancy, was that you flying outside my window with a jetpack? Because it was. Oh, and that's how our friend... That's how our friend the Banshee flies around. Jetpack. Banshee has her own jetpack. Here's a family tree. There we go. Lapine gives you that. It gives you an extra sheet of paper. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, but the, the solution was C, L, I mean C, Q, L, X, N. So that gives us this key and I the Nancy. I think this doll, doll is supposed to be me. Yep, fantastic. Here's a diary. Despite my reservations, Brendan built and gave to Fiona her very own jetpack. Her constant, often tearful pleas for permission to use his had simply become intolerable. Brendan said it would help teach her responsibility, and I must admit, the look of pure joy on her face when he presented her with it, and her spontaneous, utterly sincere promise to use it carefully forever and ever, half convinced me it was a good idea. Besides, Brendan's work keeps us all so isolated here, it breaks my heart to think how lonely and bored she must be. So we gave the eight-year-old a jetpack. Okay, that's... I don't think that's a good idea. Would you give an eight-year-old a jetpack? No, 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 you wouldn't. So that's that's a book. So, tells us a bit more about who this girl is. She is Fiona. She is Fiona. Fiona Malloy, the, the young girl who lived here before it exploded. Looks like uh, the rumors of her death were uh, a little bit exaggerated. So, Brendan and Caitlin. Ah, descended from uh, Kylie Malloy? Look at all those Malloys everywhere. Okay, five-year-olds can have jetpacks, just not eight-year-olds. Great. Good to know. Weird. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, let's see if we can do this. I'll try for that Easter egg then, with uh, just putting a thing in every single room. We'll see if that's an Easter egg. Nope, doesn't look like it is, but it could be just one in every room. Nope. So let's solve this new puzzle then. Let's see if I can solve it. That would be, that could be something else. So this one, it, it looks like it has the cat above the girl, and nobody's directly above. There are no directly above. So they're all somewhat to the left of, uh, to the side on any floor. So on the same floor, we have a dog, a sheep, and a cat. And it looks like we've got... I think it's the second floor, because the sheep is below something, but the sheep is also above something as well. So the second floor has got to have dog, sheep, man, and then cat. Okay, there's something directly above the sheep. Um, no, not directly above the sheep, though. The man's somewhere above the pig, so the pig's somewhere here to the left. And it looks like um, man is left of the sheep. Well, we already knew that. Like this clue and that clue, that's sort of redundant. So the sheep is somewhere to the left of the pig, although we know the pig is on a different floor. Okay, so sheep directly above this guy. And then dog directly above the woman. And cat directly above uh, uh, the redhead. So that would... That, that's good so far. Although the game says I'm missing something somewhere. I need to put the Nancy doll somewhere. So where's the Nancy doll in relation to everybody else? Well, Nancy doll is to the left of that. Hmm. So those three would go directly in a row. Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um... Where am I? Oh, I didn't have the cow anywhere. The cow is somewhere above the sheep. Okay, so now I'm just going to see what what this is. So cat is directly above uh, that girl. So if it's something like that. Yeah, cat directly above that one dog directly above that one as well and sheep directly above the man but hmm okay how is this possible give me a second here because those all have to be together in a line those all have to be all four of them together in a line and the sheep is going to be directly above a man Yeah, and then the cat's somewhere to the left of the pig. But then the sheep is next to that man. But then it's going to be the three girls all next to each other. According to this... This thing. That's not directly next to. You're right. None of the things are directly next to. Okay. Got it. So there, yeah, there's no red anywhere on here. So that's where I'm messing up. Okay, good. So if I have something like this. I just keep trying until I figure it out. Okay, cat above the, the red head. Dog above uh, the yellow head. And then sheep above uh, this guy somewhere. Okay, so it's going to be this guy to the right of that guy. Yep, and those those are all good. And then dog, sheep, that one and that one. Those clues are all good. Sheep somewhere next to the pig. Okay, man uh, somewhere to the left of the sheep. One, two, and then three. Yeah, that looks good. And then it's going to be redhead somewhere to the left of that guy. Somewhere to the left of the cow. So let's see. It's going to have to look like this. Got it. Okay, got the Easter egg. Woo! A lot of work, but solved the puzzle. Hooray! 
Sorry if that took too long. I, uh, my apologies. But I just just wanted to get it all done. Get that Easter egg out of the way. And let's call our... Uh, I mean, let's talk to our buddy Kit. Is he still here? What's going here? on? I found out that Mr. Delaney is the one who hid Matt's luggage. Why would he do that? Apparently, he was adamant that Matt not stay in the nursery. So he removed all of Matt's things and hid them down here, thinking it would force Matt out. That was the day Matt disappeared. Stubborn old loon. Well, then, I guess that just proves this really is all just one big inane practical joke. Matt vanished, thinking we'd find his luggage in the nursery. Unless Denal is lying, and he hid the luggage for some other reason. For crying out loud, Nancy, find Matt before this mystery drives us all loony. I'll see you later, okay? Keep it real. And there we go. So, we have the key from the upper room, uh, you know, the, the, the room, since we opened the roll top desk, so we can use that key inside the bog hut. Right here. It's just gonna confirm the information we already know that, uh, so Fiona, yep, Fiona was apparently six years old when she got that jetpack. And Fiona is, in fact, this person. Oh my gosh. Uh, listen, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be in here. This is your home, isn't it? My name's Nancy Drew, and you're... you're Fiona, right? Fiona Malloy? Huh? Fiona, listen. I didn't mean any harm. See, I'm looking for someone. A young man named Matt. I don't suppose you've seen him. Fiona? <laughs> ah! <laughs> so Fiona drops Nancy into an underground tunnel. Oh man. Yep. So Fiona's the banshee. She's the one who kidnapped Matt. She put Matt into extreme quarantine. No, don't touch that. We're going to no. see it right here. Extreme quarantine. Nuts. Well, now you're trapped over there and I'm trapped over here. Now I'm done. I take it you're Matt. I'm Nancy Drew, the maid of honor. Thrilled, I'm sure. You wouldn't happen to have a tunnel boring machine in your pocket, would you? Or food? Do you have any food on you? A biscuit or two? Some crisps? Cocoa Kringle? Anything? Ah, uh, sorry. Oh, the only thing that woman in the shabby dress ever gives me are carrots and potatoes and such. I've been wandering around down here for days. I want something full of sugar and nice, greasy fat. You know, real food. Just how did you wind up down here anyway? I stumbled upon the entrance to a secret passage in the nursery, so I thought it would be jolly good fun to make some ghostly sorts of noise from inside it and give Kyler a fright. But all of a sudden, this crow flew in through the window and came straight at my eyes. I fell backwards into the passage trying to get away from it, and the next thing I knew, I was falling through a hole in the floor. Fortunately, I only fell about two meters. So I got to my feet, and since it was dark and my glasses were knocked off when that crow attacked me, I started feeling my way along the wall, looking for a ladder or something, so I could climb back up. But instead, my hand hit some sort of button. A siren went off, the door above me slid shut, and there I was. I yelled until I was hoarse, but no use. I was trapped. So I felt my way along the tunnel, looking for another way out, until I got to the lab you're standing in, at which point... I blundered into the button you just pressed, siren goes off, door comes down, and suddenly I'm even more trapped. Not long after that, the doors at the top of the silo slid open. So I looked up, and by squinting really hard, I could see an old woman with long hair, wearing a long ratty dress, just standing there, looking down at me. I called to her, told her who I was and what had happened. I told her everything, called to her till I went hoarse again, but she just stood there. I even tossed my ring up to her, saying, Go ahead, keep it, just get me the heck out of here. Nothing. She didn't say anything to you? Not one word. 
she just tossed a turnip down to me and left. And since then, every once in a while the silo slides open and she'll be standing up there in the fresh air looking down at me. Then I get showered with vegetables, she goes away and the silo slides shut. Whenever I talk to her, she kind of grunts as if she understands what I'm saying, yet she refuses to help me. It's like I'm her pet or something. And now there's two of us. Dibs on the potatoes. Why did this door shut when I pulled that switch? As best I can figure from the papers and drawings I found, you're standing in the laboratory where the bloke who lived here during World War II did all his top secret research. He was working on new forms of propulsion to be used in flying machines, rockets, that sort of thing. Apparently, to keep unwanted visitors out, he planted devices which would allow him, at the push of a button, to seal off the lab. This gate and all the others will go up when our hostess decides to feed us. Opening those silo doors seems to reset everything. Opening those silo doors is also the only way out of here. Believe me, I know. Mr. Delaney, the caretaker? He thinks you were spirited away by fairies. <laughs> You know, I actually miss that superstitious, super ridiculous old fossil. Kit and I spent the better part of an evening rigging line in the garden so we could fool him into thinking a leprechaun was moving through the bushes. Only a branch snapped off and whacked Kit in the eye, and that was that. Except I must admit, seeing as I have no idea who or what that thing is that has us trapped down here, Mr. Delaney might not be all that wrong. I'm pretty sure her name's Fiona. She's the daughter of Brenda Malloy, the guy who was doing all the research down here. Everyone thought she was killed along with her parents when this place exploded. But she wasn't, and she's been wandering around in the bog near the castle ever since. So, if our wedding ever does take place, it looks like I'll end up with a crazy in-law after all. I think that's the story of how Kit got a black eye. They were just trying to play a prank on Mr. Delaney when one of the branches smacked him in the face. Why didn't he just admit that? Uh, yeah, it's a little embarrassing, but it's better than telling obvious lies about how you were injured. Kyler's trying her best not to show it, but she's really worried about you. That's the worst of it. Knowing that my eagerness to play a silly prank on her is going to wind up ruining the wedding. She's going to be so disappointed and humiliated and appalled. She'll never forgive me. What an idiot I am. I love her so much, and I am so lucky a mongrel like me landing someone as smart and beautiful as her. And now, whether I ever get out of here or not, I'm going to lose her. What an unthinking, short-sighted, immature idiot. Matt has learned his lesson. Playing ridiculous pranks is not a good idea. For a while, Kit was convinced you disappeared because you had decided you didn't want to marry Kyler after all. I'm not surprised. The fact is, soon after we got here, he tried to tell me I was about to make a colossal mistake and that I should call off the wedding. Such wishful thinking on his part is exactly why I didn't ask him to be my best man. Oh, I made up some excuse about office politics and occupational expediency, but... Kit was, and is, and hopefully always will be, my best friend. But having him be my best man, knowing he's still smitten with Kyla? I figured I'd pass. I'll be in here, checking everything out, okay? Great. Why don't I wait right here? She's just gonna wait right here while Nancy builds herself a rocket ship. Yes, Nancy's gonna build a rocket ship to get out of here. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> So there's the tail fin, and then the nose cone is going to be here. Let me just put all the pieces into place. Yeah, so Matt made up the story about office politics. He really didn't want his best friend as his best man because Kit is still madly in love with Kyler. Good call, Matt. Good call. And he managed to get it done without <laughs> without hurting anybody's feelings. Like, Kit totally bought that story, even though it's a total lie. So that's good. And yeah, so the only way to get out of here is to set off the silo doors. 
Nancy, Nancy has to set off a rocket to open the silo doors. Amazingly. So we want these colors to connect to each other. One is red. Two is blue. Three is orange. Four is yellow. And five is green. And the final thing we need, um, well, okay, two final things we need. We need to set this to 90.1. And then the final thing we need is the key. So, in order to get the key, we have to solve this, this chemicals puzzle. See, this is category one, category two, category three. Don't worry about category number four. So we need to use all those chemicals. Ah, that, that note, this, this explains a lot of those puzzles we just solved. Did you know there was a button here that says, in case of lockdown, press to open? What? You mean something that could open up a way to escape was right under my nose the whole time? That does it. If I get out of here, I'm having that eye surgery. My weak stomach will just have to get over it. And this is the chemicals puzzle. So with this puzzle, we want to put all the chemicals in place. All right, so NH3 is category number one, and so is P. So let me grab some NH3 here. I want to get up to it, pick it up. No, NH3, category 1. So I'm going to move it all the way over here to the left. Drop it in category number 1. So H2O is category number 2, but it doesn't look like there's enough room in category number 2 to drop that H2O. It really doesn't. Okay, so let's see. i got to get the H. H is category 1, so I'm going to get H out of the way. Let me do the exact same thing for this H that's right here. Get that H out of the way. And then next we want to get the I out of the way. So I is category number two. So I should be able to drop it down here. Good. HG is in the way, but that's category number three. So I need to make a pathway to category number three before I can get rid of that HG. So let's see, I'll get rid of this P. What is P? P is category one. this H out of the way. So yeah, do you think I, I could risk getting this H2O into category two? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think that would be worth the risk. I, don't, I think if I did that, I would explode for sure. Okay, so NH3, again, that was category one. Yeah, this is going to be the last puzzle, besides for setting off the, uh, well, setting off the rocket. But I've got everything prepared, so setting off the rocket shouldn't be too tough. Okay, there's H again. H is category one. Trying to get to the F. F is category number three. So I've almost got category number three sort of done here. Okay. I was category number two. So I'm getting this I out of the way.
I think I might have enough room to grab that HG now and just go through the middle there into category number three. I think I might. Good. Okay. That's a relief. Okay, so now I can get this P out of the way. P was category one again. Very tense puzzle, because you make a single mistake and then kaboom! Okay, let's get Radon out of the way. That's RN, right? That's Radon, so that's category number three. Okay, good. Grabbed it correctly. Good. So I've got all those things out of the way. BR is category number three, and so is H2O. Our H2O is category two. So let's get H2O out of the way. There's an S. That looks like it's in the way of the H2O. So let me uh, grab that S and then I'll grab that big thing of H2O. F was category three again. Okay, should I do BR first or eh, let's do let's do the BR first. BR is category three. Okay. Whew. Kind of nerve wracking here. So H2O. Category 2. Okay, let me get this. This one next. Okay, P was category 1. This is kind of tedious. Yeah, yeah I, I guess it's tedious, because I have to... How many of these things do I have to get? A lot of them. A lot of them out of the way. You don't have to get everyone, like that final H2O on the board. You could just leave that in place. If you really want to. And you can get rid of it if you really want to. I don't know. That, that one puzzle... The, the super long uh, Renegrams puzzle in uh, Shadow at the Water's Edge. That puzzle is just kind of... That one is the worst. Both of the really long puzzles in Shadow at the Water's Edge are kind of bad. I think it, it, it's part, part of the reason it's just so bad is that it's like, well... Even if you know what the answer is, it's still going to take you at least 15 minutes to do it. I haven't been timing this. How many minutes have I been at this puzzle for? So I've been doing this rather, uh, I mean, this is rather quick. Rather quick, right? I haven't had any mistakes so far. Oh man, that tartan puzzle in, uh, yeah, this... Silent Spy. Woo! That one's kind of rough, too. Can be difficult, yes. Okay, K is category one. Yeah, we're getting relatively close. Okay, let's get rid of CL. That's gonna be uh, category two. Seven minutes. Okay, so I've been doing this for seven minutes. Okay, cool. K 
Okay, is category one again. More like eight minutes now. Okay, so eight to nine minutes on just one puzzle. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Is that is that enough, or is that a little too excessive? Category three was this one, yes. Okay, hydrogen, category one. I don't want to risk getting that key without getting that CL out of the way, so I'm going to get the CL out of the way. And it looks like, yeah, you can avoid getting the H2O and the RN there. So, CL was category two. You know what? I'm just going to clear the board here. Just going to clear the board now. Might as well. RN was category three. You get an award for sorting all the chemicals. Might as well. You know, I'm this close to the end, right? H2O, Category 2. Woo! Somebody time me on that. Was that 9 minutes or 8, eight minutes? Probably 8 to 9 minutes. 9 to 10 minutes. 8 to 10 minutes. Puzzle solved. 100% completionist mode. No mistakes. No mistakes. First try. Yeah! Woo! Okay, so I insert the key here uh, on the right. And then one, two, three. Go! Woo! Well, back to the drawing board. What? Oh, did I not set off the... Uh, I need to reset the key this time. Oh, that's silly. I need to reset it to 901 again. I, I did that earlier, you saw, but it looks like you have to reset it every time you look at that thing. Oh well. <laughs> Solve the chemicals puzzle. Die on the turning the knob to the right twice puzzle. Yay. So, um... What was Kit doing with Kyler in the garden? I don't know. I don't know. Nancy? What on earth is going on? Matt! Kyla, we're trapped down here. Get a ladder or something. Oh, Matt, I've been so worried about you. Where have you been? I missed you so much. I was afraid I'd never see you again. And I've got so much to tell you. No, I take that back. There's only one thing I want to tell you. I love you. Do you hear me? I love you! By the time Kit came back with a ladder, Kyler had said I love you to Matt approximately 150 times. And Matt had said it to Kyler about 200 times. And they were still saying it to each other on the day of their wedding four days later. Even Kit remarked that Matt's little misadventure seemed to have been good for their relationship. Needless to say, this bummed Kit out. Until he met the very beautiful young Irish woman who catered the reception. Long story short, it looks like Kit will soon be returning to Ireland, and not just to sketch plans for potential housing developments. As for Mr. Delaney, he still can't accept the fact that the strange wail I kept hearing wasn't a banshee, but an old siren that Matt kept inadvertently setting off down in the tunnels. Nor is he clear on the fact that Fiona, whose jetpack was also a source of weird noises, was responsible for many of the strange phenomena he'd always attributed to fairies. But he understood immediately that Fiona was someone in need of compassion and helped the police take her into custody without incident. Apparently, after the explosion killed her parents, Fiona was taken in and raised by an old hermit who lived alone in the bog hut, which did not exactly do wonders for the little girl's mental or emotional development. But she's getting lots of attention now, and she's so bright. After all, her father was a rocket scientist, 
that her prognosis is actually pretty good. Me, I'm on my way back to the States via jet plane, not jet pack. My pack and Fiona's were quickly confiscated by military types bent on adapting them for use on the battlefield. Unfortunately for them, Brendan's intricate fuel system has them completely and hopelessly stumped, which has no doubt made Fiona's crow and all its feathered friends very happy. They finally have the skies above Castle Malloy all to themselves. What flower was not listed in the herb book? I don't know. Marsh Marigold? Ah, I got that wrong. But I did get the achievement for, for putting all the bottles away safely. Yes, good job with the chemical stuff. Woo! Oh, boy. When my best friend, Bess Marvin, wins a vacation for three at a resort on a private island in the Bahamas, she naturally invites me and her cousin, George Fane, to go with her. But by the time I arrive, the owners of the resort are nowhere to be found, and Bess has been kidnapped. To get her back, George and I must find a long-lost treasure, a quest that brings us face-to-face -face with many of the island's strange inhabitants and forces us to risk our lives, both on and in the sea. Help us find the treasure before this sun-drenched paradise turns deadly in my next adventure, Ransom of the Seven Ships. Woohoo! Everybody's favorite game. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Okay, so I got three achievements instead of... How many are there? 10, 12? So, the wedding went off. Nancy found the groom and saved the wedding. It's amazing. They, they get to live happily ever after. Oh, and I love this music. The island's many strange inhabitants. Some monkeys, the one guy. There's uh, an octopus at one point. Yeah, and that's about it. Oh, there's also a parrot. Can't forget the parrot. Oh, I forgot to call Nancy's friends in this game. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, and there are bats on that island, too. So, uh, I believe this game has some outtakes. We'll try to get all the, uh, I, I mean, we'll, we'll watch all the outtakes, and then I'll, and then I'll do an official end to this, this video. I'll do my outro and everything. Do, 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 do. So this game came out 2008, 12 years ago. Take one. Speed. Action! Oops. <laughs> Take three. Speed. Action! Depth perception stinks. Let me try it again. Oh, come on, guys. Let me open the box. I gotta know what's in there. Please let me open it. Please. Please, 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 please. Surprise! Haha, <laughs> it's a pigeon. Okay, so that is officially the end of Nancy Drew, The Haunting of Castle Malloy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me play this game.